Hello, everyone. It's Omaji, and the Council of Light is also here fully present, as well as Gaia at the level of her higher self. To support this teaching and remembering around the body deva. The body deva is a nature spirit of earth, part of the nature fabric of earth. Its beam of light emanates from the divine spark of Gaia in the heart of source. And you partner with a body deva in order to incarnate in the earthly realms. It's your ticket in, if you will. You are an etheric soul, an etheric being that has its divine spark in the heart of source. Your beam of light emanates directly from your divine spark in the heart of source. We're just gonna invite you to take a moment to remember the collaboration prior to your incarnation, inviting some energetic aspect of you to reference you prior to your in incarnation, working with your guides and advisors, your spiritual family, and the body deva that you partnered with for this incarnation. And at the level of your higher selves, you and your body deva worked with all the guides and advisors to plan this incarnation appropriately to serve the highest good of all, meaning everybody wins. And not only are you very compatible with the body deva you're partnered with, this isn't your first incarnation most likely with this particular body deva. For most of us, the body deva we incarnate on earth with originally is the same body deva we incarnate with every single incarnation on earth after that. And so we'd invite you to just take a moment to again, lean into the part of you that knows to reference all of your history with this particular body deva nature spirit is an etheric being of earth part of nature, part of the nature fabric of earth. And it has access to all the resources of earth, it has mastery of those resources because it's part of earth. Think of it as a child of Gaia because it emanates directly from Gaia. It's an aspect of Gaia herself. And when we let the body deva hold responsibility for itself, for its own energetic fields, which are different than our energetic fields, the body deva starts to move into greater empowerment and remembering of its mastery as a nature spirit of earth. It has mastery of evolution. It has mastery of all the resources of this realm, meaning like I'm being shown the lines of energy, the network behind the scenes, etherically, where the body diva can literally link in to the energetic resources first, to find them etherically first. And once it locates them etherically, then it manifests in the physical realm. And think of resources as we talk about resources of earth, it's really at its core, the qualities of Gaia, meaning the support, the safety, the empowerment, the mastery that Gaia holds, the ingenuity, the creativity, the ability to literally sync up with synchronicity, divine timing, divine flow in the manifestation of resources, in the manifestation of everything required to maintain and sustain the physical. That's the body Deva's job. And for many of us that when we first hear that, it's, it's pretty radical. 
because for most of us as a soul, we've been trying to do that on our own as the soul, thinking that it was our job to generate the resources of this realm, to link into the resources of this realm, to manifest specific conditions for sustainability, comfort, physically, right? The food, the money, the car, the home, even the divine partner or community. What if that's actually mostly body deva? You can think of physical realm, earth, body deva's domain. Now, can we support the body deva in manifesting resources? Of course. Because we're writing in the body, on the front of the body spine, for a beam of light, literally emanating from source, our beam of light runs along the front of the body spine. The body Davis beam of light runs through the spinal cord. It's really tandem with the body Deva. So the body Deva is empathically impacted by us as a soul and our resonance. And mm, I'm going to say most of the time, but we'll say over 83% of the time, the body deva will follow our lead. So if we're vibrating, resonating in oneness with source, in abundance, in joy, in freedom, in flow, the body deva is going to feel that and it will move in that direction for itself. Usually it wants to go to the lighter vibration. It wants to go to what feels good. And so you can choose for you as a soul to activate the vibrations that you're choosing for you to experience yourself as, because whatever you activate within your energetic fields reflects into, and it flavors your experience. but it's about focusing on the inner world first, not being attached to the outer. We're gonna show you what we mean by that energetically. And we've done a lot of teachings, a lot of transmissions around how to manage that, how to work with your higher self to activate certain qualities within you and then in our most recent videos over the last three years, we've been including the body deva in that, inviting the body deva to also do it for itself. So that you're both doing it if you choose. It's all free will based. No one's doing it to you. And you're never doing it for the body deva. The body deva is doing it for itself. And so as we get more and more into our own lane, as an etheric being of light and identify as that and allow the body David to have its domain. It's the one linked into all the dimensions of earth directly. It has direct access. It's like our, it's like our backstage pass to earth. I'm being shown all access pass to earth, but it's the body David that does it. So you give the body David back all the responsibility for that. And you're still driving your own ship in the, in the sense that you're choosing the resonances that you're wishing to swim in, the freedom, the joy, the abundance, the oneness, the connection, truth, joy, peace whatever it is that you're choosing. And then you can work with your higher self to activate those resonances within your river of light, your beam of light. And this is all again, moment to moment choice. We have choice, we just forget to choose. So becoming conscious and aware is really about remembering we have choice and then choosing if we choose, because not choosing is also a choice. And so part of this is also holding the energetic responsibility to choose. 
and, and we're inviting you at the level of your higher self to retrieve all that energetic responsibility for you choosing your internal reality and resonance off of everyone and everything, especially circumstances, the outer world, what's happening in the reflection. And moving into the empowered energetic stance, you're being invited to move into the empowered energetic stance where you choose regardless of what's happening. In other words, I choose joy. Higher self, will you activate more of that, please, within me as a vibration? It's always a vibration first, then the thoughts and the feelings follow it. Perhaps it's I choose support because that's also a frequency. So if you're feeling unsupported, it's an indicator that what you're really after is to activate more support within yourself. Turn up the volume of support. And so you would make the request to your higher self to do that for you. And then you can also invite the body to, to do the same for itself. And then you can expand that even further by inviting the teams that work with you and your body to do that as well. And then it creates a strong, coherent group field of support that positively, empathically impacts you and your body, David. So there, there's an expansion of this and we could keep going. But the purpose of this really explanation is to really get us in appropriate orientation with who we are in relationship to the body, Deva, and what's actually our job? What do we hold responsibility for? And that is, oh, choosing for me as a soul. I'm an etheric being. What do I want to vibrate as? What resonance? And keeping our attachment on our river of light, not out here, because that's when things get wonky. As soon as we try to control the outer, get attached to the outer, we've now agreed to separation consciousness instead of oneness. I already have. It's already here. I already am. So we're going to show you what we mean by that and show you the difference between the two so that you can be clear about what your choices are. And we're also gonna invite the enlightened body devas to show the body deva how to do this for itself, how to tell the difference, how to get in its own lane, hold responsibility for it choosing for itself. So again, inviting you to give back to the body deva all responsibility for itself, for its own energetic fields, for its own health and well-being. for its own prosperity, for its own abundance, for its own freedom, for its own safety. Let the body deva hold that for itself because what happens is if I as a soul riding in the body, same way I would ride a horse, let's say, if I take responsibility for the body deva's safety, then the body deva is no longer holding the responsibility for its own safety. It's looking to me as the source. And in the divine design, I can't be source for any other aspect of life but me. Source is my source. I am one with source. It is. But the, the, the supply that I source from source is coded for this aspect of life that is me. It's my infinite supply for me. The divine is literally flowing it 24 seven on me for me. And I choose to access it or not for me because free will is a thing. If I hold responsibility for any other aspect of life, for their safety, for their support, for their freedom, whatever it is, 
Now they're looking to me to be their source and they're waiting for me to give it to them. The only issue is I can only receive what's coded for me. I can't give them my fabric of support. It won't work for them. I can try to give it to them and it'll totally clog their pipes because it's not calibrated for them. You as an etheric being of light that are more of a galactic origin are calibrated very differently than a body, deva, nature, spirit of earth. Different operating systems. Think of it as an Android and an iPhone. I'm not gonna run the same software. So will you let the body, deva, hold all the responsibility for itself? encouraging it to retrieve all responsibility back, where it gave it away maybe to parents or authority figures or mentors or loved ones to be the source of anything, where it gave responsibility away to anything in the outer world. From a separation-based perspective, encourage the body day at the level of its higher self to retrieve all its responsibility for itself back holding it at the level of its higher self where it can. Then what magically happens, literally activates its energetic fields differently. When the body David's holding responsibility for itself, then it knows what to do. Things start to activate and come online. Oh, yeah, wait, it's my job to source for me from source. Let me do that. And it starts to do it. And resources lack is no longer a thing. Now, there can be other layers where the body Dave has taken on things to try to process for someone, or it's running old grids that are outdated that function from survival consciousness, separation, fear, lack. So these are all things that we can address kind of layer by layer in a very systematic and efficient way to really help accelerate the body David's evolution and awakening to its own mastery. And simultaneously, we're training ourselves as a soul to let the body Deva have its own lane and to really encourage it to spread its wings and fly. Because that, my friends, is when the rubber meets the road, as we say, in life becoming very magical here in this physical experience, because you're literally letting your tour guide of earth, your body, David, nature, spirit of earth, take the reins and show you how amazing it can be on this planet. But if we're holding the reins and we're trying to drive the ship in all ways, in all aspects that are really the body Davis job, some of them, things get wonky because we don't have the same all access kind of pass that the body Deva has. And one of the ways that I'm shown is to think of the body deva as a bit of an adapter that we need to function in this in these dimensions of earth and it's it's our access point and so we're just going to bring in now some energetic downloads to help you receive a remembering in your own unique way from your higher self your guides your advisors of kind of how to be in your own right relationship with the body deva and what your job is in that collaboration inviting the body deva nature spirit to also be reminded working with its guides and advisors its higher self what its role is in the collaboration and the thing about even when we talk about physical health. So the body Davis energetic fields, an aspect of the blueprint of the body Davis energetic fields will reflect as the physical form. That's all body Deva has nothing to do with you as a soul. And we, when we try to shift or control body Davis domain, especially physical stuff, 
that has to do with the actual physical form of the body, we get in the way of the body just in its own mastery healing itself. And I'm being shown the idea of an octopus regrowing a tentacle or this idea of regeneration in various species of life forms on earth. Our body to even nature spirit is a genius when it comes to things of earth, physical health realm, accessing healing in other dimensions and bringing it into the physical dimension. That's all body Deva. So we're going to invite you as a soul to retrieve all responsibility for your issues that the body Deva may have been trying to process for you or show you, right? Mirror back to you and retrieve all responsibility for you seeing it, being aware of it, working on it. Body Deva, that's not your job. Holding it in a higher dimension, working on it there where you can, the level of your higher self. Inviting the body Deva to only focus on its pieces, what's coded for it. Because that's one layer they're showing me. It's like, that's where health can also get a little wonky is if the body Dave is trying to process an issue for the soul or present it, like mirror it back. And if you have a pet in the physical world, sometimes they will attempt to be the mirror similar to how your body Deva, nature spirit, may take on that role because that's an old program that we're in the midst of graduating out of. So you can also work with your pets. They also have an etheric soul and a body Deva, nature spirit. And so you can work with the pets, body Deva, nature spirit specifically and invite it to upgrade into the oneness based systems where it no longer takes on issues of others as a way of being of service. Because that's really not helpful at this stage of the game. So we're going to bring in some energetic downloads for everyone involved, even your little fur babies. Just a little nudge, a little like memo. We're kind of retiring this paradigm. Now, some pets will. Some pets, mm -mm, there's no way they're gonna. And that's okay. So you just, it's like creating that space for them to choose for themselves. Because for some of them, it's in a contract. It's like, this is what I signed up for. This is what my quote unquote purpose is to my person and I'm gonna do it. So I know I worked with um, my dog, Chloe, extensively, <laughs> um, just encouraging her to let go of those old grids, those old programs. And she did, she would, and then she wouldn't. It's like to some degree, but then there were certain parts of it that she was like, uh-uh, this is part of what we're working on um, together and I'm not gonna do it. So. Uh, it's a process, you know, evolution is a process, but as you're working with your body Deva and other body Devas, if that's something that resonates for you to do etherically, um, telepathically through intention, it's helpful to remember that there's no right or wrong. And it isn't about a race to evolve. Each soul, body, Deva, nature, spirit, being will evolve when it's ready. However, there can be a collaborative, supportive, co-creative way of coaching a being into what its choices are, encouraging it helping it be more aware of what's actually available to it, 
helping it learn why this is actually ready to retire because it's codependent and separation consciousness based and that isn't where we're going. It's very similar to what we model and demonstrate in these sessions. It's about bringing things forward into awareness so that the one in choice is more clear around what it actually can choose and what's available. And it's really a remembering, oh yeah, that's a possibility that I can choose if it feels, if it resonates. But it's never forced and it's never, you have to choose this. It's an invitation to choose. And so we would encourage you to practice that with your body, Deva, to the degree that you desire and be gentle with the process because it is a process. And just, with your, just as with your own awakening as a soul, your own remembering, you maybe needed to hear something 50 different times in 50 different ways for it to really click. It's very similar to the body day was awakening. It, repetition is not only helpful, it's necessary. And again, it isn't about controlling the body deva or trying to make it go to the next step. It's about encouraging in a supportive way, gently pointing to possibilities, reminding it of who it really is in truth. Reminding it that it can choose to retire the separation-based ways of being in favor of the oneness. And so we're gonna be offering a weekend immersion specifically for the body deva to support it in its evolution. Because when we look at the energetics right now and the accelerated ascension cycle that we're in and what's happening on the planet, we look at for those of you who resonate with our work and what would be most helpful right now, it's really about an offering that will help the body devas catch up with you as a soul. And by that, we mean shifting its grids, shifting its ways of being, remembering who it is in truth, orienting appropriately as one with Gaia so that it can access all of its resources and be in the divine timing and flow of nature that is so lovely and elegant and it's like abundant. And so this weekend immersion is called the Body Deva Renewal. And it's really all about helping the body deva transform from the caterpillar to the butterfly and emerge into the new phase, the next phase of its evolution with as much grace and ease and in as much efficiency as possible. So it doesn't have to roll around in the struggle to evolve, it can simply be reminded very gently, oh, here are your choices that you can choose to activate, to, to bring in for you certain grids, certain vibrations, to retire certain, it's like a pair of shoes you've outgrown that worked 10 lifetimes ago, but it really isn't for you now. It isn't current um, with the step you're on. And so uh, the immersions that we offer come with a large container, if you will, an energetic container that is similar to a cocoon where you and your body, Deva, and your teams can feel really safe and supported and clean. It's like a clean energetic environment, pure, where this energetic kind of, it's a container. I don't have a better word for it. Container is held for you to shift you, for your body, David, to shift itself in a very gentle, graceful, empowered way. Because when the body feels safe to shift, it will. And 
the container goes far beyond our time together. It actually starts the moment you enroll in any of our offerings. Again, with all of our offerings, there's this energetic container that kind of comes with it and they're all unique because they're woven. It's like the walls of that container are woven with the intentions for those specific offerings and with the safety and the support and the love that you're basically held in throughout the transformational period. It doesn't end the moment the event ends either. It continues beyond. It's like it helps with the preparation and it helps with the integration of the work after. I want to point that out because we often don't really address it and it's helpful to be conscious and aware of all that is actually happening because it helps you receive it more and claim it for yourselves. And so we're going to put a link in the description for this body day of a renewal weekend immersion that is going to be held over and in the Taurus new moon energies, April 29th through May 1st. The Taurus, as you know, is all about earth and body. So it's a perfect wave of energy to support this ushering in of the new for the body deva as it claims its mastery and its next phase of creation and expression that is so empowered and so connected it it's like if if we're ready and we're willing the separation playground is over and we're really being invited right now to graduate beyond all of those constructs and mechanisms and to claim the oneness, unity, consciousness-based ways of being and grids and templates that are available. And so that's what we're going to walk through, the various aspects of that. And cleaning house, if you will, of anything that isn't of your essence, your body of his essence, so that it can start this new wave, this new phase of the golden age, uh, beginning to literally birth heaven on earth because it's aligned and attuned and linked in to create from those energies and from those, like using those grids, those ways of being, assuming oneness as, as the foundation instead of assuming separation and functioning from that very different world. So if it resonates for you to join us, we encourage you to visit embracingtheinfinite.com to learn more or to use the link in the description. And we also encourage you, if it's something that resonates to join us for this event, we encourage you to set that time, that weekend aside as if you were literally going on a retreat where you get all your food ahead of time and you situate yourself in such a way that you can really give yourself that time of nurturing and un undistracted um, receiving and integrating. They're always very, immersions are always very potent. We do a lot of work and we do a lot of work in the higher dimensions, far beyond the mind in and around uh, the immersion itself in preparation. And again, and, and it is an integration kind of tying up any loose ends after so the more time you can give yourself, it's really about you claiming it. I'm going to get, I'm going to drink all of this in. It's really always about your intention and what you're choosing for you. And you can always invite your guides, your higher self, your future selves to send you appropriate energetic information and to share with you whether this offering is for you and for your body deva, whether it would benefit you. And that's always a great way to kind of navigate your choices 
is to get that information from up above in, in the, the bird's eye view, um, kind of eagle's perch perspective because your future self knows. You know, there's a saying, your future self will thank you. Um, and you can actually work with your future self to discover, is this something that is for me? Will this benefit? Is the, will this create more in my life? More love, more joy, more freedom. And so we encourage you to use your multidimensional resources, which includes your future self, your body to his future self to determine as you navigate this time of great change, what is for you? And as we kind of wrap up this energetic transmission, we invite you to receive what is here for you, from you, that you've kind of been waiting for the right timing, the, the right energetic environment, to bring in for you. What are you, what's the next piece you're ready to remember vibrationally? We're just gonna hold space for you to receive that. Good. So much love to each of you. So much gratitude for your willingness to grow and evolve in a conscious way and to hold space for humanity to awaken when they're ready. And if you'd like to join us this weekend, we're offering an equinox transmission of light on Sunday, March 20th, which ends up being a 3-20-2022 energetic. And it's a launch point big launch point that we're in the midst of coupled with the full moon energies that we're already in. It's this big wave ushering in the new cycle of the phase. It's like next, next wave of ascension, next wave of creation. And so we're going to actually look at energetically linking into each of you in your own unique way, your own highest potentials. It's like, okay, what's the highest wave of creation for me to link into for me? And so we're going to be doing some energetic product processes and protocols to harness the potency of this launch point and you can start preparing now to the degree that you choose in the higher realms with your guides and advisors. If you'd like to enroll for that Equinox transmission, you can go to our website at embracingtheinfinite.com. Much love to each of you, and we look forward to connecting with you all again soon. Blessings. <laughs>